Nation. Stand by for an urgent bulletin. This is the Bob and Jeff Show, starring Bob Lutz. Now, I'm going to be honest with you here. But here's what I've learned about myself over the years. I have a high-functioning brain. You! You seem to know all the players in this poorly acted farce. What do they call that one? Jeff Lutz. Goodness gracious, you're really struggling today. If I had said that, I mean, I'd be kicked off the show permanently. Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. 97.5 in 1240 KFH. Good afternoon, everybody. It is the Bob and Jeff Show, KFH Radio. Tuesday edition. Had to think there for a minute. Seems like Wednesday. It does? But it's Tuesday. Man, I wish it was Wednesday. That means tomorrow would be Thursday. You don't like Tuesday. Not a big Tuesday guy. The only thing I like about Tuesday is uh, we get the trash picked up. You notice last, or yesterday the sun was out. It got kind of warm. Uh, but not uncomfortable. And what happens Tuesday? It's dreary. It's still kind of nice out. I thought you liked dreary. I know, but I'm just saying the the universe tells us what days to like. I thought, but I thought you liked dreary. I don't know if I like dreary. I like. I don't think it's dreary. I think it's a nice, cool, overcast day. You need some of those, man. That's my. I'm just saying it's it's not a coincidence that it happened on Tuesday rather than Monday. Well, that defeats everything you've ever said about you want darkness. You don't want the... I like natural darkness. I like when it gets I like when it gets dark naturally. I like dark skies. I don't, I don't mind overcast you don't like every what? now and then, but uh, not every day. It's 60, uh, 69 degrees out there. Yeah, whatever. We've got showers in the area. They've moved off mostly to the east. But if, if I, I spent some time uh, over across the street this morning and thoroughly enjoyed it. What'd you do over there? Ah, uh, you don't need to know that. What? Uh, what's the? We're getting the uh, lights figured out. We're going to have new lights installed on two fields. That's what I was wondering about. What's the ETA for those? The... We hope soon. You got a lot of uh, irons in the fire right now. A lot of irons in the fire. Professionally, personally, kitchen remodel. Uh, at home, a lot going on for an old man. There is a lot. Think I can uh, withstand it? Probably. It's most mostly other people doing the work. So that's. Well, now good. wait a minute. What do you mean by that? Well, I don't think you're going to go out and put up lights, are you? I don't think you're going to. No, but I got down the walls in the I gotta kitchen. I got to facilitate. Do you? Sure. Why do you think I was over there? I mean, you facilitate, but they kind of figure it you out on their you own. You think you could do this job? No, of course not, but nor would I want to. Well, why don't you think you could? It's just not in my wheelhouse. I'm not a go-talk-to-light-putter-in-her guy. <laughs> what? You know what I mean. I don't want to go over there and talk to somebody putting in lights. I don't want to do that. That's just going to make me sound like an idiot. What well, do you put mean? Put them here instead of this over no, here. I'm just listening to them. This I'm not offering my opinion. Well, then, then I what, don't know anything about it. I what's just the want facilitation a, about? The facilitation is when can we get it done? What needs to happen? What's our responsibility? Uh, things Sounds like, like they're that. facilitating you a little bit. Well, we'll tell you when it gets done. We'll tell you. No, I'm all, I'm all, I'm the I'm the guy, man. You know what happened today? No, I don't want to know now. Because all you're doing is uh, lobbing insults. No insults. You're, you're degrading me. You're, you're downplaying me. And I don't like it when you do that. Uh, others can do that, not my son. I brought you into this Wait, world. shouldn't your son be the only no, one who can do that? my son can't do that. Who, name the top five people who can do that. Anybody else. Really? They're allowed to throw insults at you? Not you. All right. Even my wife is allowed to. Uh, because I'll listen to her. You're not. All right. You're not here without me. I don't even remember what we're talking about anymore. You understand? Yeah. So, you know, you bark up that tree, and I'm going to bite. Does that make sense to you? Are you in the tree? What do you have? What happened today? That Well, someone, and uh, I'm not going to watch it straight through or even look at a lot of it. I know what's going on. Oh, it's got to be the Eagles. It's the Eagles. But Gosh, Jeff, every day are we going to do this? But I will say this, and it's hard to get it because it's like a two-hour video. Someone filmed the whole concert. Uh, but Don Henley said J.D. Souther. No, he didn't. He absolutely did. No, he didn't. 
One hundred percent. No, he, he did. didn't. Yes, he did. <laughs> no, he did. Yeah, he. Of course, he did. Well, I don't have proof. Well, I'll find it for you. You watched the whole thing? No, I wanted to hear the parts where he talked. I did not watch the whole thing. Why would you? I thought you were going to avoid this. Well, I can't, and I don't care. Uh, I wish Duda was here right now. It's going to be amazing either way. It's going to be a culmination. It's going to be a a lifetime encapsulated into Do you think I should just nights. drive out there on my own and go? I heard you wanted to go. Who told you that? I just heard it through my the wife. Grave. I don't know. This could have been. How would I pull that off? Why don't we go for our last one ever no, in January? That doesn't have uh, appeal. No offense. To, to go with your son for the last time? I know that sounds terrible, and listeners, please hang with me. The thing that has the most appeal is to go out on my own. Uh, I don't remember who I went with in 1977 or 6 at uh, Henry Levitt Arena. I don't. I honestly don't remember who I went with. I don't know. I presume I went with somebody, but I may not have. No it, reason to. It's possible that I just went. Because I don't remember who I was with. I can't imagine. So it might be. 1976 Eagles coming to your city. Unbelievable. I might just say, you know what? Let's end it the way it started. Me solo. You should end it with your son. Why? Why not? Because I'd have to drive with you out there. Yeah, it wouldn't be for fun. You're right. <laughs> I'd We'd have to, you know, talk and uh, would it work? I can't do a, the same hotel room with you, so you're going to have to buy your own hotel room. Well, I feel like I don't do the same hotel room outside of my wife. I Those days are over. You know how you used to get sent out uh, with the Wichita Eagle and you shared a hotel room with another guy and one time i didn't what, have to what, what it was it? unbelievable it was so good in such a nice hotel who me one what? of those years i think it was the play in game year for wichita state uh one of those where i got my own hotel room and it was just luxurious maybe i was waiting on you or somebody but uh i had my own room unbelievable what do you mean you had your own room i mean i had my own you room you paid for it as far as i know i didn't pay for it well, that's just ridiculous. I didn't like rooming with no no offense to anybody. Who's your least I favorite with. roommate? I'm not going to say just, that. No, they're not listening. No, I'm not saying that. They might not even be living. A couple of them snored a lot. Well, so do you. No offense. Well, I, I didn't at that time, but I did later. <laughs> what do you mean? So do I? No offense. You snore. No, I don't. Not anymore. No. That's good. I've had uh, several things cut out. All right, here's what we have for you on the show today. Adam Teicher, ESPN.com, longtime chief, Chiefs beat writer, will join us at 225. Of course, it's Adam's final year on the beat. He's been on the beat over 30 years uh, in one capacity or another. Kevin Saul, Wichita State Athletic Director, our guest at 245. Pretty good day to have Kevin on as... It looks like the AAC is holding together uh, after being poached or attempted lured, attempted poaching from the uh, Pac-12. And then later today, Jeff, I'll have a game. Probably. What do you mean probably? I mean, I do have it. Something. What do you mean probably? It's something. This is every Tuesday, yeah, man. Yeah, no, it gets hard. It's a staple of the show. I understand it's that. It's one of the only responsibilities you, know you have. Why don't you create a game Because once I a get month. all the guests. Yeah, I could do I that. I do all that. That's what I do. I could do all that. I could I could text okay, Adam. Okay, you got, the te you got a guest from now on. No, I'm not doing it. <laughs> See? There you go. I don't, I, don't get, uh, I don't get back to a corner like that. If you wanted to say, hey, maybe a time or two you can get guests and, uh, and we'll work together on it but i'm not going to no, you're doing I, I like getting guests anytime the 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 thing is you're doing this the answer is i like no. getting guests and i really don't want you to have anything to do with the guests perfect so but i do want you to have a game every tuesday well i got a 25 and uh that's your responsibility now all right 
We had a big brouhaha about you watching games yesterday on the was show. Was it a brouhaha? Uh, big time. It was a guy just saying, I have no big effort. Time. So I'll ask you this. Now, you know I didn't watch the Monday night games. I'm going to say this. I, I watched some of the Bills-Jags until it got crazy. Didn't watch uh, the Washington Commanders, but went back and because of all the uh, glowing comments about Jaden Daniels, I went back and watched the highlights. And let me say this. We talk about rookie quarterbacks who struggle, and there have been many of them. This guy ain't struggling. Doesn't look like he's going to. Did you ex- – Did you? we're three games in. He doesn't have a ton of weapons. I mean, he's got uh, McLaurin. He's got the two running backs he can throw to a little bit. But it's not like it's the, the commanders are just loaded. And he's making plays – Left and right, and it's uh, it's pretty impressive because he won the Heisman last year. It's weird, right? It's like, did he surpass Caleb Williams, or was Caleb Williams so entrenched in people's minds that he Who's had to the go? Commanders one? coach. Oh, I don't know. I don't know either. I keep going back to that. Um, they look like wasn't it an assistant from the Forty Niners, Max? Thought it was Dan Quinn. Is it Dan Quinn? The uh No. He's a coordinator somewhere, I think. Well, I don't think you know. Uh if Max is right. He's Dan Quinn. How about oh that? Oh my god. You know what? You now you owe Max an apology. I thought he was still a coordinator. I didn't know he got a job. Well congratulations a, to Dan Quinn. He's been around forever, mostly on the defensive side of the football. Maybe he's just turned uh, Jaden Daniels over to the offensive coordinator and said, make him. Make he him go. got a team to the Super Bowl. He got the Falcons to the Super Bowl. I don't, I don't mind Dan and, Quinn. And now if he has a dynamic young quarterback and someone you can build around, who knows? I don't mind Dan Quinn. I'm all okay, I don't I'm know on board. Dan Quinn. I don't know him I personally. I told you the commanders are that kind of team that I feel a little something for. You know what I'm saying? Well, they got rid of their owner. They they – said goodbye to Ron Rivera as coach. They brought in new front office people. They brought in a new coach and, and the, uh, a new quarterback. And the Cincinnati Bengals are 0-3. Yeah, it might be done. How's your guy uh, uh, Scotty Griffiths doing? I don't know. And our good friend Joel T. Lamerno. I don't talk to Scott about the Bengals. Hey, you ought to rub it in. We're Guardians fans. That's what I'd do. Why? What's the point? Just having some fun. When you haven't won... A championship. You can't go rubbing it in with other people. That's well, just bad karma. Or maybe since I've done that my entire life, I should start rubbing it in. Maybe that's what works. The Cardinals suck this year, by the way. Why'd you say that about me? I'm just rubbing it in. They'll be okay next year or not. I don't care. They're, they're going to do something that will please me. You say that every year. And- I believe that this is the year they... Uh, they put John Mozalak, and we'll get Bernie Miklas on the show next week. Uh, this is the year I believe they put him into the background, at least. Here's what I figured out, though. Organizations don't really change. And most teams these days kind of operate the same. And if you're waiting for some splash and you're not the Dodgers or the Yankees, then you're probably going to be waiting a long time for that. Well, I disagree with you. The Cardinals have come to that fork in the road, and that's not the Guardians. The Guardians never make a big splash because they, they have about thirty five dollars. Why do they win all account. the time? What huh? do you What do you think um, helps them win all the time? Ah, luck. They're just lucky. They must well, have some good players. You know, they must do some things right. Terry uh-huh. Francona was a great manager. Stephen no question Vogt. about it. Well, you got to say you got to give him credit. He's a uh, Potentially the American League Manager of the Year. It's not going to be Quartaro anymore, is it? Certainly lost some of his juice, no question about it. Um, I don't know who it would be outside of your guy. Probably has to be him. Maybe the Astros guy since uh, nah. he brought them from terrible early on nah. to a division. They were expected to be good. But they weren't for a while. That's not it. That, that, uh, that, that, that's I bet not, he finishes second or third. That's not a positive for him. In my opinion, that's why did it take you so long, pal? It's his first year, too, isn't uh, it? I don't buy it. Sorry. Second, maybe. Not going there. 
Uh, a lot of big series. Can you uh, going on and in, in, what? Nothing. Go ahead. Don't ever interrupt. Well, I was like, can you not have a successful managing year and and be a good manager if you have a just good? Just don't team? interrupt me. I just don't like where you're going with that. Um, big series all across baseball this week as things play out. Some things we know, some things we don't. Uh, the Detroit Tigers are up 2 nothing at the end of 5 over Tampa Bay today they 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 uh, what they're doing is there will be books written little little unheard of about what the tigers are doing they just are relentless you can't slow them down not they got not the rays yet. and the white Sox. they're going to they're going to sweep both yeah the royals are in trouble and the twins are in trouble well, they they're both, fighting it out they both have one sort of tough series this would be that for the Tigers because Chicago isn't. Atlanta has, or the Royals have Atlanta to end it. They have Washington. Let me tell you, Washington's no walk in the park. I know they're not, their record's not good, but the way the Royals are playing right now, uh, Washington will be a real challenge. That series begins this evening in the nation's capital. You've got the Orioles who are fading, like, I mean, they're dropping quick. Uh, in New York to face the Yankees. You got the Mariners and the Astros, a big series in the American League West. And then in the National League, you got the Mets and the Braves. Uh, the Braves clawing, fighting to try to get into that third wild card position. And they're fighting and clawing with the Mets, uh, who are right there with Arizona. Those three teams, uh, two of those three will get in. Right. It's one, it's basically. I guess Seattle's in the mix, but you have Minnesota. I'm talking about the National No, I'm talking about me too. I'm going over there. Okay. Back. I'm, I'm not going back talking over about there. the American League. No, I'm saying they both have that, where in the AL it's kind of Minnesota, Kansas City, Detroit. One of those is going to miss. Seattle. Seattle. One of those. And then the teams in the NL, there's, they're, they're right there. One of them's going to miss. And then you have the. Uh, what do you want to say? When I do that. That means I'm not pleased. I don't care. When there's that little pause. Oh, and and this is supposed to make me feel yeah, what? It's supposed to make you think, what what, what did I uh, mess up there? I didn't. Uh, you also have the Padres and the Dodgers. Now, both of those teams are in, but there's still some doubt as to who's going to uh, win the West Division in the National League. The Dodgers currently have a three-game lead. That's correct. A three-game lead over San Diego. So, interesting stuff in baseball. And tonight, like some idiot, I'll tune in and watch the Cardinals, the Cardinals in Colorado. I mean, can you imagine? They're, uh, at, they're home against Colorado. No, they're in Colorado. I thought they played at Colorado already. No, they're in Colorado. Trust me, I know where they are. I believe you, but I could have sworn. No, you're wrong. We had this you could have sworn a lot of things. About how difficult it was to play in Colorado. You could have sworn Dan Quinn wasn't the coach of the Falcons. I don't care. The commander. Coach of the Falcons is. I mean, you swear but to I a care, lot of things. But I care about where the Cardinals are playing tonight. And I'll, that's what I'll be watching. Enjoy like it. Some, like some loser, like some sad sack i win tonight i got into one of these games that really matter because i'm almost drawn to it yeah if i uh if i win tonight i don't have a meaningful game in 10 days or so what am i gonna have nothing to do with winning what am i gonna do with myself for that long of a time who cares yeah exactly who cares what you do with yourself who cares there's 10 days seriously uh, Josh Allen was fantastic last night. That team, that team's amazing. Uh, they lost a lot of weapons offensively, or so we thought, and they've just replaced them. Yeah, they believe in the guys that they had. They, Khalil Shakir. Well, uh, how, why though? Because Khalil Shakir is good. And yeah, I think, but, and I think they knew that he was good. So hey, we don't maybe don't we don't need Stephon Diggs and Gabe Davis anymore. And we'll lean on James Cook a little bit more. And we'll bring a rookie running back and a rookie receiver in to help us. He and, completed uh, twenty four passes last night to ten different people. Right. The, you're going to win a lot of games if you got ten guys you can throw to. 
That's kind of been Patrick Mahomes' forte over the course of his career. That may be something the Chiefs kind of need to get back to to spread the wealth. Have to pick up one of those uh, one of those people. Who are you going to pick up? Dalton Kincaid, baby. Really? You taken your tight end? Yeah. Who is your tight end? I don't know. I thought you had a good I'll tight end situation. No, nah, I don't have a good. I don't have a good situation. It's too bad. Uh, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll get with Adam Teicher. ESPN.com covers the Chiefs. Stay with us. Bob and Jeff, a Tuesday, back in a minute. This is the Bob and Jeff Show. All right. Adam Teicher joins us from ESPN.com, covers the Chiefs. He's been a friend to our show and previous shows here for a long time. Uh, hey, Adam, how are you? Good. How are you doing today, Bob? We're uh, we're doing okay. Here are the Chiefs, 3-0. and And in this league in, in 2024 and, and the way that we consume our sports and comment about it on social media, Boy, if you just read uh, if you just read social media, you don't know what to think. I I am of the uh, opinion that if you're three and zero and you're unbeaten, and you played three pretty difficult games, you should be pretty happy. Yeah, um, it beats the alternative, right? Um, and um, you're right. So maybe staying off social media ought to be the best uh, uh, avenue for everybody here, but. You know, you're not. Uh, you know, there are a lot of people who are. You're right. A little bit down on the Chiefs right now, but I, they're not necessarily the only ones. I mean, I don't know if you heard uh, Pat Mahomes' comments after the game in uh, Atlanta the other night, but he sounded like a guy who'd lost the game. You know, whose team had lost, and he was. Uh, you, you would never know that he was the quarterback of a three and zero NFL team. Uh, he he just sounded a little. Uh, um, down, I guess, would be a, a pretty good word. And, uh, you know, he just felt like he hasn't played well enough and the Chiefs haven't played well enough. And, uh, um, you know, he's not apologizing in any way for 3-0, and but um, just uh, you can tell he didn't feel like they've necessarily earned that record. Is this still a quarterback league? And I, I present that with no alternative. I don't know what other kind of league it would be, but there have been some standout performances uh, by quarterbacks, but mostly the numbers are down. We've heard it about Patrick Mahomes' uh, career lows and, and stuff like that. Is it, is it all relative, uh, the, the numbers Mahomes is putting up so far? Yeah, I mean, I think what we're seeing with the Chiefs is a symptom of what's going on around the league. I mean, you know, they've uh, there's a lot of teams who are sort of struggling this way, and uh, so it's not necessarily going to be pretty, that's for sure. But um, yeah, so you know, I, I think it is a bigger. It's kind of a symbol of what's going on that um, you know, there there are a lot of teams that are struggling. I, I still think it's. You know, you've got to have that big time quarterback to win a championship, but um, maybe it's what the big time quarterback looks like nowadays. It's not like it did, you know, five, six, eight years ago uh, when they, they were everybody was putting up big numbers. Maybe it's going to look a little different this year. Adam Tyshar, guess the Chiefs three and zero. They have a road game coming up Sunday in Los Angeles against the Chargers. We're not sure of the status of Justin Herbert, at least I'm not. Uh, So who knows about that one? Uh, But the Chiefs are now without Isaiah Pacheco. They're without Hollywood Brown. Those are certainly two guys that figured prominently in this offense. Um, Who who steps up? Uh, Do we think Carson Steele has what it takes? He looked he looked pretty good the other night, no question about it. Can Xavier Worthy increase his production? Can Travis Kelsey become more like what we're used to seeing from Travis Kelsey. And then Rasheed Rice, who's played like an all-pro so far, uh, can he continue at that pace? Yeah, um, they, you know, they, they've got to – it's got to be all of the above, right? I mean, I, listen, with regard to Kelsey, you know, the, the, part of what the Chiefs were thinking during the offseason in drafting Xavier Worthy and 
um, signing Hollywood Brown was that they were thinking, okay, we we need to start transitioning our passing game away from being centered around a tight end who is now or soon to be 35 years old. He's going to be 35 in a few weeks. Um, and so that's their thinking there. And, and so um, it, it, this season in the Chiefs' plans was never going to be all about Travis Kelsey. It was going to be about him playing well, but maybe shifting a lot of his burden off to other guys. And we've seen that at least with um, – Rasheed Rice so far, but now they've got to find somebody else to kind of help out. And whether that's Xavier Worthy or somebody else, I don't know. Uh, but they, they've got to get more from their other guys, no doubt. And, and they need more from Kelsey, but they can't ask of him what he used to be. They can't ask for that kind of production from him anymore because that's just not reasonable. So, um, you know, he can be part of the solution, but he just can't be the whole thing. They've got to have some other guys and uh, – um, you know, Worthy's a rookie. What, what, what do you have the right to ask from him? So, uh, you know, it's gonna, it's an interesting uh, situation here for the Chiefs, but they've got to, uh, got to identify somebody for sure. Yeah, you kind of answered my question about Kelsey, but I was just, I was just going to ask. You know, what does being a franchise and an NFL icon basically get him? Does he get 17 starts uh, if he's healthy? Is the leash quite a bit longer with him? Uh, how does that uh, all play out if, if Travis Kelsey is still not putting up uh, the the numbers in a few weeks? Well, you know, then the Chiefs, if you know, if, if they've determined that the problem was with him, then they have a decision to make, right? I mean, do you keep playing and and uh, or do you lessen his load and and play Noah Gray and and some of their other younger tight ends a little more? Um, um, so I, I, you know, that's a good. Uh, a good question here, but um, I, I don't know what they're going to do, and that's um, you know we'll we'll see when it comes to that. Um, I, I still think he's going to have some games that are uh, similar to what we know him to be. You know, that'll be uh, uh, Travis Kelsey like games. He probably won't have this consistently as he did, but uh, hey, until he has them, I guess we'll never know. Adam Teicher is our guest from ESPN.com. I thought of this question last night because I'm trying to think of fresh fresh questions to ask about the Chiefs. Uh, we talk a lot about Andy Reid. We certainly talk a lot about this personnel. Uh, but I want your thoughts on Brett Veach and, and the job he's done over his time in Kansas City and not only building a championship roster, but so far being able to sustain it and and to make it a powerful roster year after year. We had Blair Kirkhoff on the show yesterday, and I mentioned to him that we get caught up talking about uh, maybe the potential uh, some decline in the offense, but we don't talk about how well the Chiefs play defensively now, and that's a defense that was built through uh, the drafting and moves of Brett Veach. Uh, how good is he, Adam? Well, I think he's um, one of the best in the league. You, you, you know, it, it's not easy what, what they've done. The, the team they built around Patrick Mahomes, you know, that's uh, they've done a really nice job through the draft, uh, particularly on defense, as you mentioned. I mean, just about everybody the Chiefs played defensively came to the league with the Chiefs. You know, there's, there's Justin Reed at safety. He uh, was a free agent addition. Just about everybody else who plays any kind of significant role on defense started their careers with the Chiefs. So um, it's been uh, um, a pretty uh, impressive um, uh, output from that group. And um, you know, he's the architect behind that. So they, they've done a really nice job there. And there, there's some other things that they've done. You know, with the, the Tyreek Hill trade has worked out about it as well for the Chiefs as they could have imagined. That, you know, they, they've won two Super Bowls in the years since he's – been traded and, and they got some guys who were part of that defense you're talking about and including uh trent mcduffie here so they, they've done a pretty nice job not certainly not perfect not everything they've done has worked out but uh so far i i think um you know he, he's done about as well as the chiefs could ask out of him i love pacheco i thought he was such a big part of all of this he's down for a while maybe the entire season Kareem Hunt, we have learned, uh, is expected to be active uh, on Sunday against the Chargers. Is Carson Steele the the right guy? Is he the is he the one, 
or could Kareem Hunt uh, and and even potentially Samaj P. Ryan, uh, could this be kind of a, a shuffle situation in the backfield? Yeah, I, I don't know how all this is going to shake out. Um, you know, I, I um, it's going to be interesting to see how it does. Um, I, I thought the backfield worked pretty well last night uh, or Sunday night in Atlanta without um, Kareem Hunt. So I'm kind of wondering what the what the idea is behind that. What the Chiefs think they're going to get that they didn't get the other night? Because uh, I thought those guys, uh, P. Ryan and, and Steele, did a really nice job. So um, you know, we'll see. Somebody's going to lose some carries. Um, somebody's going to lose out if if Kareem Hunt plays and. Uh, I don't know how that's going to work. I, I would think all three guys would get some snaps, but uh, we'll, we'll see whether the Chiefs uh, agree with that. All right, Adam. We always appreciate your time. Thanks for being with us, and we'll get you down the road. All right. Anytime, guys. Thanks. Adam Teicher, ESPN.com. Uh, yeah, the Chiefs are fascinating. Uh, they go to L.A. to face the Chargers team. Have you seen any update on Justin Herbert? I thought maybe that uh, it was closer to that he will play than he won't. Well, they have. Uh, but, uh, also, the line was like eight and a half, so that's well, they played very good defense early on. Have the Chargers, uh, so we'll see that uh, that one kicking off at three twenty-five. Of course, all Chiefs coverage uh, right here on our sister station, KNSS. We look forward to that. Love that for us. Yeah. Here's Kevin Saul, Athletic Director at Wichita State University. He joins us for his monthly appearance. Kevin, hello. Welcome. Man, I love you guys. I could listen to that for uh, for days. You guys just uh, uh, ping-pong back and forth. It's perfect. I'm great. How are you guys? Uh, we appreciate that, and we're, we're, doing, okay. we're hanging in there well. We appreciate your time, as always. So I've been, I'm fascinated by college athletics, uh, maybe so more I. than I've ever been. <laughs> and not necessarily for what's going on on the playing field. I just sent, yeah. I find it uh, incredible what's happening off the playing field with expansion and NIL and and transfer portal. And we've been watching with great interest as the as the Pac-12 tries to get back into uh, uh, some kind of stature, and certainly made an attempt uh, to bring in four schools from the American. Memphis, UTSA, Tulane, and South Florida. Uh, that was next yesterday, those first four schools committing to the American. This stuff is uh, in, in amazing. How do, you, how do you take it all in? Well, I, I think what the, the objective is uh, just to, to, to be a sponge for information and lean on those that, that know – uh, that are involved in in those discussions, right? I mean, it's the best thing that you can do. It's um, if you react and jump uh, every time there's news, uh, that's all you'll do is just keep jumping around and 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 stressing and worrying over different things. So I I, I have to uh, commend our commissioner Tim Pernetti. His leadership's been phenomenal here this first uh, five six months. And he's done a really nice job of uh, keeping the dialogue open and transparent and very communicative um, with ADs, inclusive of those four schools that that, that you referenced. And uh, just walking through it, I guess, more in a consultant-type role than, than a convincer-type role. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you've had four institutions that were approached by the Pac-12, and um, indications were that the Pac-12 had a – consultant that was working with them to project and speculate uh, media value for a new league um, or a projected new league. And uh, those numbers weren't necessarily um, ones that you could quote unquote take to the bank. And so I think every institution has decisions to make, right? So the South Florida might be in a little bit different position uh, because of geographics, um, uh, and and Tulane might be in a little bit different based on their profile. So I think everybody's going to evaluate those things and where they stand and, and, and what that looks like. At the end of the day, all those institutions are doing is to try to provide um, more and better resources for their student-athletes, recruitment, retention, development, all those things. So 
Um, it's, it is a very, very interesting um, dynamic, and we could talk probably an entire show on how the Pac-12 is doing what they're doing with Mountain West schools, how the Mountain West would respond to that. You know, as I was a student athlete, I was in three different leagues uh, over the course of four years, guys. And I tell you that what the Mountain West is doing and, and the Pac-12 is doing is really just kind of shuffling the decks out in the, in the West Coast. And we're starting to see a conglomeration of teams that we've seen. If you go back and look 12, 15 years ago, it starts to look very much like it looked 12, 15 years ago. And there's a lot of money changing hands to make it happen. Yeah, that is interesting and a little strange and i was just going to ask you know generally speaking you don't have to address the four aac uh, schools in particular but when a coach gives a commitment and then you know he'll leave a player can commit to a school and then recommit and decommit uh are we naive to believe that a that a school saying or a in a that it, it committing to a conference is uh, more true than if uh, any other party says it is, or is is it uh, is that real? Jeff, I think uh, contracts by their very nature have outs, right? And so the three entities that you just mentioned, whether it's a league, whether it's a head coach, or whether it's a student athlete, two out of the three of those have financial ramifications for breaking contracts. Um, and so there's certainly there are realities uh, that come with uh, realignment, right? Um, tens of millions of dollars in exit fees and or uh, some news outlets call them poaching fees. But uh, you see this changing of hands of dollars where the Pac-12 was sitting on substantial dollars based on the departures of schools um, out of their league and into the Big Ten, and then those dollars shift to the league that the Pac-12 is using to, to backfill their membership. And so there's financial ramifications for all of those things. Coaches have buyouts and, and, and all those things. What you haven't seen is those financial ramifications for student-athletes. I do think that you know in the coming months and years, we might see – um, what was the financial aid offer, you know, room, board, books, tuition fees, cost of attendance, all some educational funds. I do think there's going to be some transparency where you'll see NIL figures um, in those offers from schools to student athletes. And when that occurs, I think you'll probably see multi-year agreements that might have some buyouts and some financial implications to them. Wow. Kevin Saul, our guest, athletic director at, at Wichita State University. So uh, let's th- let's talk about uh, men's basketball because that's kind of the e- – even though, listen, we understand all of the programs matter and, w- and we get it, but men's basketball is Wichita State's uh, f- uh, version of football at most other schools. Uh, as I've often said and uh, believe fully – uh, everybody's trying to win, and not everybody can. There's a winner and a loser in every game played unless uh, you're playing soccer or something like that. How difficult is it to get to get to that point where Wichita State is once again uh, a dynamic men's basketball program? What's it take? How do you facilitate that as an athletic director? What can you do uh, to help Paul Mills get to that point? Yeah, I, I really appreciate you asking that question, Bob, because it's what I spend 20 hours a day thinking about. And at the end of the day, in its in its simplest form, I think you've got to hire really, really good people that are competent. They're great culture people that can lead programs and young people. They, these are leaders of young men and women where those men and women want to be a part of what's going on, and, and they're willing to sacrifice to be a part of it. So it starts with really, really good people. And then we can go into every element of support uh, for a program, whether that's you know scholarships or travel, gear, nutrition. Um, all of those things are critically important. Um, our student-athlete experience is critically important. At the end of the day, what it comes down to is having – leadership in your programs, um, and an administration that that is committed to first-class service to student-athletes and coaches and is committed to removing obstacles. That's ultimately what this is about, is remove obstacles to give our coaches and student-athletes pathways for growth and development. And the, 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 the success that we all 
yearn for doesn't happen overnight. And if it does happen overnight, you're probably going to read about it on the ticker a couple years later because there's just no, there's no magic potion to this thing. It takes time. It takes commitment. It takes collective commitment on the part of not only an administration and staff, but a community as well, the form of season tickets, because we all understand that championships uh, need to be aligned with uh, championship level resources and expectations. So there's so many elements to it, Bob, but at the end of the day, it comes down to having high quality people in your program that understand the direction, right? Direction determines destination. So first you got to be pointed in the right direction. And then at the end of the day, you've got to, you've got to travel the pathway and the journey and remove obstacles and understand Paul says it all the time. Elevators don't get to the top right away. It, there's there are levels to this thing, and we'll continue to progress and get better every day. So you know, last year uh, men's basketball played a game against KU that uh, raised NIL funds. We've seen Oklahoma State put a QR code on the back of their helmet. We've seen Tennessee add a NIL fee to ticket prices. How do you as a, an athletic program go about exploring creative ways to increase the, your NIL profile? And uh, what have those conversations been like? Yeah, that's a great question. Thank you for asking that, too. Um, so as you guys know, in the summer of 22, we were at zero NIL dollars. We didn't raise our first NIL dollars until uh, January 6th of 23. Last year, the collective distributed uh, combined all sports right around 400,000. This year, we'll be a little north of a million. And so the growth has been uh, great. And it comes in a lot of different pathways, Jeff. It's uh, from the monthly memberships, right, the, the drive for 5,000. Um, that has really picked up some steam uh, here recently uh, to uh, targeting um, uh, individual gifts and donations. And we've had some success there as well. I think people have had to learn, our head coaches and and me, uh, to have trust in what we're doing uh, and then learn about NIL, which is really important as well. Uh, but I think, again, there are so many different pathways. There's some creative things going on, too. I mean, we are exploring some uh, roundup campaigns where you guys know when you go to the you go to the grocery store, you can round up for the Red Cross or you can um, we're looking at opportunities to be able to do that. Um, we have a program that's called Shipping with the Shocks, where you've got a company that um, that say we've got a, a business in Wichita that has an interest in exploring a different relationship in terms of shipping uh, for their their company or their business, their goods. Um, there there are there is a company out there that has great um, uh, distribution all over uh, the country, uh, working with many different schools where they will actually take a portion of their net profits and donate it to uh, the local school. Uh, and their collective. So there's a lot of creative things that are going on, and we're exploring every single one of them because at the end of the day, it's not fair to put the responsibility on the backs of any one of those constituents. But by really maximizing all of those multiple pathways, I think we can get to a spot where we'll be very competitive in both recruitment and retention. Final moments here with Kevin Saul, Wichita State Athletic Director. I was at uh, I was in print journalism for uh, more than four decades. Uh, certainly, uh, Wichita State Athletics was a high priority for us. Uh, now, in this in this age where, listen, Taylor Eldridge does everything humanly possible for the Wichita Eagle, but it's it's really hard to get to everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, when when you have sports like women's tennis and volleyball and some of those things that maybe don't get the kind of widespread coverage uh, they used to. How do you keep that on the forefront? I know you have your own social media people and 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 people in your department who are who are putting news out there, but is that an issue at all? I think it always has been, Bob. You you, you um, with all sixteen of our sports, you know, we we need to do a very good job internally of telling our story. 
And whether that's our coaches, our student athletes, uh, competitive results or pregame previews and all of those things, it's number one telling the story and then it's the distribution. And as you know, Bob, the distribution for a long time has been, um, you know, your media listserv. And so you're you're adding um, names to that, whether it's local media, regional media, national media. Uh, we want to try to distribute this thing as best as we can. And then you've got your your social media strategy, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, all of those things uh, to try and get your story in front of people and and do it in an efficient way. Right. Because if you if you work to try to maximize all of those things, you're probably going to exceed the allocated resources you have to be able to do that. Um, so marketing, promotions, advertisement, all of those things, we try to find a really good balance to do that. And I, I, I am pleased with the coverage of all of our sports. Um, I think from a marketing and promotion standpoint, both internally and externally, we've made it a real priority. Um, we're seeing attendances uh, uh, grow uh, over the last year or two, which is certainly helpful. And um and again, success has to come with that as well, Bob. So as we continue to grow our programs, I just encourage Shocker Nation to uh, to give us a call. Um, I, I think they're going to be very proud and pleased of where we're headed in both of our basketball programs. They've done a phenomenal job recruiting. Um, we've got competitive schedules um, that we believe on both sides will position if, if we play well um, to be uh, an at-large consideration at the end of the year. And so this is a great opportunity for get folks to get involved go on to GhostShockers.com or call our, our, our ticket office at 316-978-FANS and come be a part of it because we've got some special things going here. All right. We always appreciate your time. Thanks for being on, and we'll talk to you next month, okay? All right. Take care, guys. I really appreciate it, and go Shockers. Thanks, Kevin Saul, Wichita State Athletic Director. We've got an hour left. We'll make it the best hour you've ever spent. Stay with us. The Bob and Jeff Show, KFA. This is the Bob and Jeff Show, starring Bob Lutz. I wish I could be in the living room of somebody who's listening to this show. Jeff Lutz. You think they're listening in their living room? And maybe. It's not 1943. It's a strange world. 97.5 and 1240 KFH. Stand by for action. All right, welcome back. Hour number two, the Bob and Jeff Show, KFH Radio. Bob Lutz, Jeff Lutz, co-hosting Max Power back in our studio Producing and engineering, the IHOP hotline, 869-1240. Did you see the news? The greatest Thunder player of all time is now an assistant coach. Watch it. What? I did see that news. Clates. Clates is back. Clayton is back. Of course, we're teasing our friend Jason Duda. Uh, They're co-greats, right? Yeah, we're going to have Clates on the show Friday, Duda Duda and me. Well, that'll be great. Are you uh, definitely off Friday? out. Good. We don't need you. You said that in a way that you were hoping I'd be in. Oh, please. I've got this so handled, you wouldn't even... Who else you got? It. We got Joanna. We got a game. We don't even need to plan. It's The show's done. It won't be a good show, but it'll be a show. It'll be a great show. I agree with you. It'll be a show, and you'll uh, make uh, the best of a, uh, of a difficult situation. How jealous are you? Not at all. Seems like you are. <laughs> I am so ready... To have a day off, and I and since we don't have a show Thursday, due to the Royals, I'll have a four day weekend. Oh my goodness gracious! How about that? I'm looking forward to it. Oh, who wouldn't be? Why are you like that? Like what? Why can't you be? You no, know, that's great, Dad. Yeah, that's you all probably right. deserve it. No, not uh, not more than anybody else. Why? Why would you? Because Max, uh, you don't have to record this. Well, go ahead, because I carry the show. <laughs> to its death? And we'll make uh, our picks tomorrow on the show. So really? Yeah, I'll get I think those we should out. make them Friday. No, we're going to make them tomorrow. I don't want I don't want to have to deal with anything Friday. You're <laughs> so lame. I don't want to make a phone call. How do you feel about that? Eh, do whatever you want. Thank you. That's exactly I'm gonna give you the attitude. I'm going to give you something to deal with on Friday. Like what? I don't know. What are you going to do? You should have given me the day off Friday. We're headed down to, up to Manhattan for family weekend. But now you're making us leave at 5 instead of we could have left at 3. I didn't know that. Did you ever tell me that before now? Uh, yeah. 
No, be honest. I think we have told you did that it's... Did you ever tell me that? I'm pretty sure we have... You did not. I've told you that it's family weekend. You did not. At K-State. So had you told me that, I would have made arrangements. But not now. It's too late. What do you mean arrangements? What do you have going on I would have done the show, but I'm not doing it now. I got other plans. What plans? You don't need to know. You have no plans. You do not need I've to know. I've never met a guy with fewer plans than you. I'm uh, going to do something uh, with my wife on Friday. So that's that's what we're uh, looking at. I made a reservation to a restaurant in Las Vegas. Never been more proud of myself. Don't care. Oh, I can't wait. I think my idea of going out solo is gaining momentum. Good. I hope you do. wonder how I'll do. Poorly. I'm that's not a, a young man. Drive. You, don't, you should let me drive. Why? And buy my ticket and the gas. And all the food and lodging. See, that's the only reason you want to go with me. Please. No, it really is. Are you kidding me right I now? I know that. Are you kidding me right now? Maybe he'll buy stuff. Well, it would be nice. You know how much money I've spent on Eagles tickets? That's not my problem. I know it isn't, but it would be. No but it's not like I'm mooching off of you for Eagles tickets over the well, years. Well, nor could you. I think you've bought that's me two. That's not even possible. I think you've bought me two out of 54. Why would I buy you any of them? I'm saying we didn't go together. You didn't want to go with me. You didn't, hey, let's go to this one. I'll go to that one with you. It'll be fun. I'll get. Uh, I don't want to go to all these concerts. I know, but I'm saying you could have you could have reached out more than really once. The, the, Did you ever buy a ticket for me? Hell freezes over. You didn't buy for me. Did but you I, ever buy a ticket for me? Yeah, of course. Really? When? The one we went to. Um, why Why do you come across as uh, this needy person? Because I want you to buy the ticket. That's all. No biggie. Well, I'm not ever going to buy you a ticket. Never? No. My goodness. And you think I'm mean. No, I'm just never going to do it. Why? Why would I? Why wouldn't you? It's what a moment you can. What adult buys a 41-year-old It's a moment person. you can share with your son. I'm not a 41-year-old person. I'm your flesh and blood. And why would I buy a ticket? Why not? Why did I buy Why a Why wouldn't you buy a ticket for me? Eh, you're pretty old. I mean, I don't get it. Would your wife approve of this kind of messaging? I need to get insurance on your ticket. Yeah. She would. Absolutely. Go for it, Jeff. Get that old man to buy you a ticket. That's what she'd say. Probably, yeah. Are you kidding? No. Well, I'm going to text her. No, you're not. Oh, she's, I am. She's homesick. You can't do that. Please don't bother her. No, I will. Don't bother her. Because this is uh, unbelievable. Yeah. Believe it. I will never buy you another thing. Then, then I guess we're not going to Vegas together. If I go, I'll go. Well, I'm if going. If I decide to go with you, I'll go and I'll buy my ticket. Uh, I won't buy your ticket. Why not? We don't want to, You want to sit with me now? No, I, I, you, we'll uh, each buy our ticket. We can't buy them together. Why? Because of one ticket at a time... Well, then you'll pay me back if I buy two tickets. Well, we'll see. And if you don't, I'll rip up the ticket. <laughs> There's no ripping them up. I'll well, buy them uh, well, with I'll your take credit someone card. someone else with me. I'll buy them with your credit card. No. Uh, I'll have them on my ticket master. No. And you won't be able to access them. So that'll well, be good. I'd, first of all, you'll never have my credit card. <laughs> uh, How am I going to pay you back then? Secondly... I'll never buy you another thing. <laughs> Nothing? No. All right, fine. And, uh, what a horrible buddy, pal. What a horrible thing to say. There'll be a call into uh, my estate attorney as well. <laughs> good. Well, yeah. You I better, already know I'm not getting anything there. You better think good. Who is that, Jeff? Somebody? You don't need to worry about it. I know who it is. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. It's not who you think it's it is. It's one of two people. No, it's not. It's this guy or that guy? No, you don't know. <laughs> uh, I'll take care of my own uh, finances, uh, including my finances after I'm gone. Are you going to have a, an auction? That's up to my wife. I won't bid. Good. You're not invited. <laughs> I won't go. I wouldn't want you there. Why? I just wouldn't. Who wants these huge uh, shrines to Jeff? Uh, I'm looking Starting forward to getting this kitchen done. remodel done because we got to pick out a microwave. Uh, we got to get a new small 
dining room set. Not not big like the last one. Uh, it'll be a cozy, kind of intimate, good dining experience uh, for two or four, not six. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna look at some things. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, you hear those planes fly overhead? Yeah, pretty loud. That's a. Uh, I haven't heard that much here at our building. It's almost that un- was loud. It's almost unnerving. I had my headsets on and that was loud. How loud was it? Pretty loud. And it's I can still hear the rumble. Are we having an air show that I didn't know about today? I don't think so. I got uh, when I grew up in Derby, and in the close proximity to McConnell and Boeing, uh, it was every day. This was every day. Just you learn to live with it. I'm sure, uh, but I don't. I don't live with that now. Although I much. told you in our home, when we close the blinds, there's this little crack between the blinds. Have I told this story? Uh, not to me. Well, I'm going to tell the story. Are you ready for it? I'm ready. So there's this little sliver of space between the blinds, and it's fascinating because. You know, as planes come in to Wichita, they kind of circle out to the northeast, and then they come back around, and in that little sliver of a space between our shades, our blinds, I can always see the plane. Really? It's the exact same flight path. I find that incredible. Every plane is right on that. Uh don't you find that interesting? It's, it's interesting. How do you know it's every plane and not the same flight every day? No, it's four, or five, six times a night. That's amazing. It happens all the time. It's small planes, bigger planes. Um, it's. I, I'd love to know more about that because you know there are flight patterns, right? You've, yeah. you've heard of those. Maybe I'll look into that. I'm right in the flight pattern where I can see that that plane between the sliver of space in my blinds. And it gives me where I, where I sit. You understand that? Like in my chair, I, I have that. Where? That vantage point. In my chair. In your living room. Yeah. I can see that. And I, for whatever reason, I take great uh, satisfaction in that. It uh, soothes me. I'm glad. Does that make any sense to you? Yeah, you like your little routine. Thank you. You're trying to get a ticket, aren't you? No, I don't want a ticket anymore. Trying to be nice so you can get a ticket. <laughs> I know exactly how you work. It's interesting. And, uh, I'm not going to put up with it. All right, don't put up with it. Now, where would Mountain you want to sit at this? Uh, now the Pac-12 has sued the Mountain West. This stuff is unbelievable. As I try, as I spoke with Kevin Saul, it's just, it's almost like the games have taken a back seat. The competition is. Uh, now Saturday we'll watch it all, but it's not nearly as intriguing as all this maneuvering, is it? Not on uh, September 27th or whatever it'll be on Saturday, 28th, I guess. But eventually the season will become hopefully more interesting than the Pac-12 and Mountain West. Travails. Aren't you uh, shocked that Memphis didn't go through with this? Not I really. know it's a high exit fee. Uh, I get it. I don't know why Memphis, Memphis would want to be been in that nearly desperate to get out of the American. Uh, we've heard it time and again from guests we've had on the show, and I'm telling you, the pac 12s some of the teams they brought in are good. That's a better conference than the American. I don't know. I'd have to really. San Diego State was recently to, in the Final Four. I'd have to really look at it. basketball. Probably yes, it is, especially if they get Gonzaga, which we don't know if that's happening or not. Uh, football probably about the same, and that's no, it's uh, not. San it Diego State's better. Boise State has uh, has fought for yeah, twenty years ago. No, that's a great program. They're a fine program. My gosh, Colorado State. Uh, no, they got then. No, that's just, a good program. No, and uh, I, I think that's a uh, and and then you got Fresno State. 
And Fresno State's had very good moments. You're, you're expressing to me a lot of meh. Okay, Fresno State or Tulane? Uh, that's a tough one. Let me look at uh, Fresno State's yearly records. Now, I don't, I don't which need team to. would I want in my conference? Just based on nothing? That is, that's also tough. I was getting ready to say Fresno State for sure. But New Orleans, man, I don't know. That's That's close to me. Okay, Fresno State or South Florida? Another one. Tampa? South Florida's not in Tampa. Where is it? <laughs> Tampa. I just like to I just like to mess with you. You you and I, and I got you. Uh another tough one. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Probably Fresno. San Diego State or South Florida? San Diego State. San Diego State or Tulane? San Diego State, probably. Of course, probably. And I listen. What's I San like Diego Tulane. State's yearly, huh? I know they're pretty good at football, but you lose track of some of these teams. Like things that you like, you talking about Boise State? They compete for that was like twenty five years ago. Boise State stuff still goes viable. fast. I know, but they're not in that class. They they'd be a great addition. To the Pac-12, and they will be. Again. They are in the Pac-12. Uh, I'm I'm very curious to see where this all goes. Uh, Memphis, I'm telling you, through talking to my sources, you understand I have sources. San Diego State's like the Oklahoma State of the. Do you understand I have sources? Not as good. No. Why well, do? Why would you? Because I still am a media member. Hmm. Should I, I have sources? Out, uh, I reached out last night to one of them. To who? You don't need to know I this. I know who stuff. it is. I know who. Gary Parrish. No, it's not Gary Parrish. Then who cares if it's not somebody that matters? <laughs> you, I tell you, when it gets to the small talk portion of this show, oh, I'm so good at it. Try and, some. And the uh, the back and forth. You you used to be really good at it. What happened? You're starting to come apart. When was I good I at it? I just think you're distracted more. Uh, I don't think you. Uh, I don't think you feel as confident. Oh, that's crazy! Being able to hang with me. That might be true. I don't know. Not about you. As you, you just said it, Max. Uh, put that well, clip aside. No, not about you. Just confidence in general. But I think it's coming back. What so happened to your confidence? So don't worry about it. I don't know. Well, give me an an an, an idea. What? I don't know. Just uh, ebbs and flows, I guess. But it'll be fine. I'll, well, be, I, I'll be fine. I everything's hope so. Everything's great. I mean, you got to bring it on this show. I usually do. I don't think just you saying something makes it true. I mean, I, I bring it. I'm here every day bringing it. And that's what I expect from uh, you or Duda or the Memphis, big fella or whomever. Memphis wants to be in the ACC probably. But then that conference is going to crumble. So who who knows? You don't know. We're Big Ten, we're SEC, and we're Memphis, probably Big 12. Tulane, South Florida, and UTSA would have been good gets for the, the Pac-12. Uh, apparently that's not happening. And uh, maybe tomorrow on the show I will attempt to get Gary Parrish. You should. He's one of your this. good sources. Or Jeff Calkins. Uh, yeah, maybe. Those are the guys that uh, know Memphis, right? What does Gary Paris know Memphis more than sure he does? He's based in Memphis. Oh, I didn't know that. That's where he's uh, been based forever. I had no idea. Well, I don't know why you haven't. I, why you don't have? Why it. would I? Because that's why would that information have come across my desk? It's common knowledge. Do you watch Gary Parrish? Is, do, do I watch, watch his him? Podcast? No. Do you listen to him? Um, when it's basketball season, not uh, during the off season. I tried to get you listen to listening to a podcast yesterday. You had no interest. No interest. A Bill Simmons podcast. I'm not interested in Bill Simmons. Really? No. Nope. Why do you think that is? Seems like he was really a big deal five or ten years ago. He's got more money than anybody on earth, it seems like. Uh, well, that doesn't mean success, and that doesn't mean doesn't? I want to hear you. Okay? All right. Are you going to watch the uh, Vince McMahon documentary? When's it out? Tonight, tomorrow. Tonight. Like late tonight, like midnight ish. Well, I'm not going to stay up to well, midnight. I understand that, but to watch it for crying out loud, I got 
I got to get some sleep. Maybe 11. Might be midnight Eastern. I'm not watching it tonight. All right. Neither are you, I hope. Mm, I doubt it. Unless it's like on my TV when I get home, then no. What do you mean when you get home? Sometimes it's weird. It just shows up. It just shows up. Yeah, like the day before it's supposed to be on. Seems like that's happened before. I've never. I, I can't even relate to what you're talking about. My Netflix is. Uh, I must have the gold package. Yeah, I doubt it. Uh, let's Max, see. Max is uh, playing the game, by the way. But what do you want to say? The uh, well, I'm trying to figure out. The Tigers held on to beat Tampa Bay two to one, and uh, the Royals and Twins. Boy, they better get. Detroit's now officially in second place. They better. Uh, they the better sense. get it going. They're 83 and 74, now a half game ahead of Kansas City, and a, a game and a half ahead of Minnesota. Wow, uh, they could be solely in that uh, wild card position. Yeah, they uh, have the first spot now. The Royals and Twins lose tonight. Crazy. Seattle just a game and a half behind Kansas City, and they are a half game behind the Minnesota Twins. All right, we'll take a break. Got a game coming up. Is Max and Max is in this playing, game? Yeah. What's the game? Tell you when we, we get gotta, back. No, we got to entice people to no, uh, hang. We hang for this one, folks. What's the, What's it about? Give uh, me the subject. Matter. It's not sports. Music. I don't know. Oh, you know. It might be. It might not be. Back in a minute. Bob and Jeff Show on 97.5 and 1240 KFH. It's time to play the game. Time to play the game. <laughs> All right. It is time to play the game here on the Bob and Jeff Show. What is the game? You're going to name either one of the television shows that was the highest rated for a year or a movie that was the highest grossing of a year. You can name either one. If you get that right, you get to name. try to name the other one. All right. Max, you want to uh, go first? And you can, And you can steal in this game. I, Max, I, you want to go first? I take it it has to be the same year for the TV and movie, correct? No, you can oh. name it. It could be any year, and you can name a TV show or movie first. It doesn't matter. Okay, but I'll go first. please declare before you. I'll go first. Okay, would you go ahead? All in the family. All in the family. Let me get off the movie page. Um. That is correct. Would you like to try to name a movie? Sure. Um, Godfather. The Godfather. Probably sometime in the... Like 72. This only goes back to 77. So oh, okay. uh, go 77, and that was earlier. So, or Star Wars. Another flaw in the game, Max. Oh, I didn't know that only... Uh, Star Wars is correct. You have two points. What's Star Wars? The he first said one. Star Wars. The first one. The original. Yeah, if you wanted to name another one, he'd say the, the subtitle. All right, my turn. Yeah. Uh, television show MASH. Television show MASH. Highest rated of a C of a year. That is incorrect. Well, this. Let me tell you right now, this thing is flawed. I'm just. I'm looking at it. Max, you get to steal. Wait a minute! Don't I get to name a no, movie? You didn't name, you didn't name the first one correct. Well, I could, the first one could have been either a movie or a television. Right. Show. You have to get it correct. Why don't I get a, a a chance at both of them, and then Max can steal where I'm wrong? Because you didn't uh, you didn't get the first one right. You don't get a bonus if you don't get the first one right. Right, Max? You can steal. Max, I can't believe you want to play under these guidelines. I, I'm, I'm, you know, it's his. He, he made up the rules. Up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can steal a television show, and then if you get that correct, you get an, another movie shot. Okay. I'll go with Happy, oh, happy Days. 
Happy Days is correct. And, and MASH wasn't. MASH apparently was not, no. Uh, and now a movie for a steal. Titanic. Titanic is, of course, correct. You lead four to nothing after one round, and it is again your turn, Max. All right. TV show or movie? Um, all right, I'll start with Five the movie. Seconds. I'll start with the movie. Um, uh, uh, oh God, I can't think of that. Oh, Time. Well, I couldn't think of the movie. You get a chance to steal a television show or a movie. What, what, what's the question? Highest rated television show of a year. Highest grossing movie of a year. 77 and on for the movies. Uh, movie... A Jaws, or was that before 77? Man, why are you making me look this up? Jaws came out in 75. Okay. I'll give you another shot. Movie. Even though you knew. No, I didn't. Movie. Um, gosh, that's so hard. Um, Five seconds. Empire Strikes Back. Empire Strikes Back. That is correct. It is four to one after. And I get a television show now, right? Yeah, you didn't guess a television and show. And what's the time frame on television shows? It goes basically back to the history of television, then 1950. Okay. Um, then I would pick Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke is correct. It is four to two, and it's your turn. Now it's my turn. Again. Um, I'll pick Bonanza. Bonanza is correct. Now you need a movie. And I would also pick, uh, gosh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Good guess and a correct guess. Max, this thing's suddenly tied. It is four and to Jeff four. looked at my phone to make sure I'm not oh, cheating. Oh, I saw you looking at your phone earlier. Oh, my God. You stole my Bonanza. <laughs> Max, it is your turn. Top of the third four. Uh, what a all comeback in this game. Never count me out. Now Max is rattled. He is a little rattled. Television show or a movie? I'll go with the TV show first. Okay. The Fugitive. Hmm. That's going to be. That is incorrect. Oh. <laughs> This is the last uh -oh, episode. Max. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. You're up. Um, For the steal. I will say Golden Girls. Golden Girls is incorrect. What? This is a false. Why is it a false? I don't know. Go, Max. It's your turn. It's still my turn? Yeah, you tried to steal from Max. Oh, so it's okay, back now to it's you. my turn. Yes. Uh, I get to name a TV show. Or a movie. And a movie. Or a movie. Yes. Um, oh, man. Uh, why can't I think of any movies? It's absolutely... Oh, uh, I'll Five say E.T. E.T. E is correct. Now a uh, television show, if you don't mind. And uh, as for the television show, I'll say Beverly Hillbillies. Beverly Hillbillies, because television has not existed in the last 50 years, is correct. Six to four after three. Unbelievable. How many rounds are we playing? I don't five? know. Until we stop, I guess. Now we'll play five rounds. Five rounds max. Highest rated television show of a year. Highest rated Highest grossing movie of a year. Toy Story 1. Toy Story 1 is correct. Ah, that was my next one. Dog, got it. And a television show, perhaps. I believe Kung Fu was, a, was oh. ruled for a year because I still watch it. Well, Master unfortunately, oh, unfortunately Kung Fu did not rule for a year. So you can steal a television show. I can steal the television you show. You can. Uh, I'll say the Andy Griffith show. Correct. 1967-68. Uh, 
It is now seven to five, and it's your turn. Black Panther. Oh, that's a good guess. Uh, yes, correct. <laughs> have, I, have you ever seen a guy turn it on like this? I don't know. Have I? No, I mean, say something. Uh, amazing. If you're really going to host this game show, you got to be excited no, for it. I'm not it. excited. I'm not rooting for anybody. I'm just moderating. I don't get it. Give me a television show Dick and Van stop. Dick Van Dyke show. Stop stalling. Dick Van Dyke, not correct. I disagree. Max, you can steal a television show here. Dick Van Dyke, not funny then, not funny now. <laughs> um, even though I don't think this is funny. Um, I love Lucy. I Love Lucy is, of course, correct. It is 8 to 6, and we go to the fifth and final round. Max, you're up. Um, the first Avengers movie. Nah. Avengers, yes, correct. What? 2012. The Avengers, it's correct. And a television show. The Penny Show, Big Bang Theory. Uh-oh. It's a good guess. That is a good guess. I'm going to actually throw that out because I'm I'm throwing out that guess because since 2011, it has been Sunday Night Football, and I don't consider that a TV show. So give me a guess pre-2011. Well, that why, why didn't you tell us that going in? I, I don't, I'm throwing it out. Well, that's a terrible uh, – uh, this game is, is just thrown together. I'm throwing it out. Max, you can guess again. My how, 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 my Big Bang Theory was incorrect? Yeah, because yeah. T- since 2011, it has been Sunday Night Football every year. So I'm talking about series that are on the air. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, we're about. changing the rules, Max. But you know what I'm talking about. Big Bang Theory no, we was a series? I know, but it wasn't highest rated because Sunday Night Football oh. has been the highest rated show since 2011. So I need a pre-2011 Unbelievable. show. Unbelievable. That was uh, highest rated. How I Met Your Mother. Unbelievable. How I Met Your Mother, that would be in the same time frame. But since oh, I already explained Sunday the night? rules, I'm not I don't know what I'm night they were on. So. No, I'm saying Sunday Night Football has been the highest rated show every year since 2011. Oh, okay. Matt, how many guesses does Max That's get? That's it. Now what? It's your turn. What's the score? It is eight to seven. So I've you, already won. No, you haven't. He could steal if you miss. I'm stealing from him. Okay, then try to name a television show. The, the rules for this are very... Give uh, us a show. <laughs> Why are you getting upset? Because <laughs> you're stalling. I just Batman. Need... Batman is a TV show? No. Movie. No, you're stealing a TV show. Oh. Uh, honeymooners. No. Have you... Come on. Have you guys watched television in the last 50 years? So it's 8-7 going to the bottom of the fifth. No. Now it's my turn. And it's your turn. So I need a television show and or a movie. Television show. Movie. I'm going to go movie first. Okay. Batman. The Michael Keaton. Yes. Thank you. And? And it's nine to seven, so you can't, you and can't now, lose. And uh, now I get one more, right? You get a TV show. I get a TV show. Yes. Um... New heart. <laughs> Come on. Uh, no. You, 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 that, that, there's no way. Nine to seven, your final. Thank you, let's, Max. Let's do some of the television shows. There's no way New Heart wasn't a top rated show. There's no way it was. Uh, Texaco Star Theater. I'll go since that was 70s. Milton since Burl, wasn't it? Rowan Laugh in. Laugh in. Uh, Marcus Welby, MD. Laverne and Shirley, 60 Minutes, Dallas. I should have said 60 Minutes. Dynasty, The Cosby Show, Dallas, Cheers, Cheers, Home Improvement, Seinfeld, ER, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, Survivor, Friends, CSI, and American Idol. Uh, some movies, Grease, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Return of the Jedi, Beverly Hills Cop, Back to the Future, Top Gun, Rain Man, Home Alone, Terminator 2, Aladdin, Independence Day, Saving Private Ryan. 
Harry Almost Potter. Almost said that. Shrek Almost 2, said Harry Potter. Dark Knight. Almost said Dark Knight. American Sniper, Black Panther, which was said. I said Black Panther. That's what I just said. You didn't give me credit Inside for Out 2. Wait a minute. Barbie. You told me Black Panther wasn't one no, of I them. I didn't. I said yes. No, you didn't. Rewind the tape. Of course I did. I absolutely 100% counted that as correct. I don't think you did. I know I did. I'll go to my grave. <laughs> you better go fast. Uh, all right. Nice comeback win for yours truly. Uh, who's now about 9-0 and against Max. Poor Max. No offense, Max, but good grief. Uh, I need you guys to at least evolve into the second half of the 20th century. I know you're not well, going to. we couldn't get it because... Uh, you had Monday night or Sunday night football, but the the and didn't tell us Seinfeld. You couldn't guess Seinfeld. I like that band out of uh, the great country of Canada. Done a little bit of their work uh, in karaoke rooms across oh, the have? city. Yeah, I have. You used to. You haven't done. I you haven't did. karaokeed in probably uh, eight years. Well, let's fix that. But I've sang in my car. My wife's. Uh, of a particular judge of vocal ability, being a former friend singing Quaker. Oh, of course. And a great vocalist herself, and uh, has given me thumbs up. Wow. You wouldn't expect that from your significant other, but. No, not if I wasn't a, singing well, I wouldn't. What a, what a rare. No, we have an honest connection relationship. that you guys have. We're not like you and your wife. Oh, Jeff, that was great. And uh, yeah, was meanwhile, our ears are bleeding. That's that's yeah, not you're the, so you're just jealous. I don't know what you're jealous that's of. That's not the kind of relationship I have. I don't know what you're jealous of. But you're jealous of something. <laughs> what are you how jealous that I know the, all the words to songs? How or? did you get jealous out of that? Yeah, well, I'm just figuring out what it what it must be. Because you're lashing out for what reason? Well, you pointing out you don't think my wife's being as uh, sincere. I didn't say that. I just uh, you, I wouldn't expect. Has she ever said that, eh, Bob? Sure she has. Come on now, bud. Yes. Watch it. Absolutely. Watch what Not you're doing. Not about my singing. What about? Oh, uh, you know, my ability to uh, cook or construct oh. a sentence. That's true. Uh, but but my singing is without uh, criticism. I made some chili last night. We should have brought you some. Well, no, you never do that. We got a lot of leftovers. I'm looking forward to the chili returning at the Artichoke. There's a little plug for the Artichoke, my good friends over there. And uh, good place. Their chili is so good, and I think it's back. And now I am not going to think about anything other than chili. We're not too far away from the Artichoke. I got to work here a little bit after the show. Then I got to get home. I got to take my wife. Uh, on a little uh, errand, and uh, hopefully we'll see some improvement uh, in the kitchen remodel. It's a long process. It's uh, going to be incremental improvement. They pretty much best. gutted the kitchen. That's the start of it. Cabinets gone, backsplash gone, wall gone. Uh, now the the work begins. They're uh, talking about getting new cabinets started this week and uh still projecting a seven week timeline that's absolutely that's correct i don't know I it seems remember. long new, they're me. doing a new ceiling new backsplash ceiling sure what's up with that you gotta they gotta repair the ceiling uh where they take the wall down you know that affects the ceiling never heard of anything like that of course you haven't because you don't so do you not have a ceiling on that part of your house right now you not know that taking a wall down would affect the ceiling but how yeah you're actually tell you're me. actually wanting to know yeah, you, tell you me. actually don't know tell me what effect exactly what effect the it wall had runs the... into the ceiling understood right? so tell me exactly now how that so you gotta you gotta refinish the ceiling and you can't just refinish that part you got to do the whole ceiling wow do you understand that no not really the uh, the amount that you don't understand could fill i'm so uh, uh, i'm uh, so the, happy i don't could understand fill the, could fill an ocean i'm so happy i don't have to understand things like that or ever think about them what That's, if you what if oh i just hate this but what if your wife would wake up one day and say, I'm going to let this clown 
of live on his own. I don't know what you'd do. I'd struggle. I'd have to find a, another lover immediately. No, you wouldn't. You no. wouldn't. There's no way you could find one. <laughs> I'd have to. You don't know how to do anything. Name one thing I don't know how to do. <laughs> name. I could name one thing you do know how to do. What's that? Get on the show and. Uh, I cook. I cook the chili last night. I make dinner and make food. Uh, chili is like it's the easiest, but I had to cut. I had to prepare. I had to, uh, but I'd make dinner a lot. Well, when I have a kitchen, I'll get back to that. But in the meantime, what will you get back to? In the meantime, I'm going to go get some chili. Are you going to get back to me cooking? Me cooking, and I can't wait to get the uh, ranchero salad at Doc Green's. When are you doing that? Uh, it's so good. Doc Green's is you know, a nice a little, place. it uh, a little bite to it. A little kick? Yeah. Well, it's Ranchero. It better. And uh, I just love it. I'm happy. I'm getting pretty good at writing with my left hand over here. Uh, so anyway, uh, if you want to go back and hear any part of the show today, and we've had a good show. I've had... A really good show. What have I had? An average show? Adam Teicher, Kevin Saul, our guests. Tomorrow on the show, we've got Wichita State women's basketball coach Terry Nooner uh, among our guests. we got a couple of big high school games here locally. Collegiate Andale. Big one. Northwest Cape and Mount Carmel. There's more than that. I looked at the slate. Yeah, but those are for the my two, Friday five. There's, those are the two really big ones. No, there's a couple other ones. No, there's not. There's not anything that matches. Yeah, up. there is. And I'll what is it? I don't remember. But I'll in my Friday. Well, if you know if you if you think you know. No, but I remember going through the games. Wow, that's a good one. Nothing matches those. Uh, they will. Because I've already. No, they won't. They will. There was like a Sedgwick somebody or a somebody someone sedgwick somebody's playing sedgwick marion is a good game yeah, that's a good game it, it doesn't match those oh two. what a game that is god what a couple three and oh ball clubs yeah it's a good game but it's not that mm. all right thanks for listening everyone we'll see you tomorrow